Beautiful. You always want your antennas perpendicular to each other. I don't have any of my stuff. Isn't that great? Hey, puppy. I'm used to working hard, and once I retired, I didn't work very hard, so <laughs> I picked this up and I'm working hard again, but I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> Hello Hobby Extreme fans, this is Mark and I'm still here in Kentucky at Taylor County Airport for Jets Over Kentucky uh, uh, Fun Fly. It's been phenomenal. My wife and I came out here as you know, we're going to post that uh, we came out here together and we brought our our steed, our Harley, to do the bourbon trail. Jenny, tell us a little bit about that tour that we just had. Just a once in a lifetime. Is I mean, that was that not fantastic? Ethan was absolutely awesome. I he mean, was. we went in the backwoods. We saw the the mother lake. We saw the mother tree. We saw we saw the, the lake where they actually claim all their water for Maker's Mark. Just the, I mean, just everything was beautiful. Yeah, the genome the fruits, tree. The yeah, genome tree where yeah. they have three hundred year old oh, genome tree. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it was fantastic, yeah, it was. wasn't it? It was a great experience. It was great. You know, and the only reason we got to do that is because it's 95 degrees outside, and we stuck to the tour. And we didn't hardly walk at all. We didn't cancel. So they drove us around in a Lexus and showed us the whole property. Ethan, With you, AC. <laughs> you are awesome. Maker's Mark, thank you so much for this. This was truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and we loved every bit of it. Now we're gonna get some cellar aged Maker's Mark, right? Right, for the Nick, who's not here. For Nick, we're getting it for my son because he is a huge Maker's Mark fan. Woohoo! So we're getting uh, some cellar aged Mark for him. Yes. Yeah, all right, stay tuned, we got more to go. Thank you. Hey Mark, what you doing? Uh, battery's dead on the bike. <laughs> so, jumping a motorcycle is not the same as jumping a car. It was not humorous having me try to uh, push it. We didn't video that part, as you can Can't tell. Can't start a 1900 cc motorcycle. It just doesn't work. But we tried. <laughs> so we got a maintenance guy coming. So now we have to pop start the bike and hope the battery charges because I got this new lithium ion battery. And all my RC guys out there know. What I'm about to say, you drain a lithium ion, what happens? Yeah. Well, let's find out if it's gonna actually even take a charge and if it will get us from point B to point C. <laughs> yes, this was after our night in a hotel. We just had Waffle House right across the street. We got here kind of dry after our rainstorm hit us being drenched so we were kind of in a hurry to get into the hotel change our clothes and make it to our dinner reservation so note to sell don't ever be in a hurry look come here take a look what you got so to jump start this thing we have to take off all of this and get to the positive terminal down there. Oh no. And the negative terminal over here. Oh no. Yeah, they made it really easy for us. Oh, wow. So we'll have to find out if, uh, I mean, we'll get it done, but it's just so much more involved. And how did I kill the battery, by the way? Well, as my lovely wife told you, we got copped in a rainstorm. So I was trying to be safe and I turned on my LED lights. And uh, the rain stopped. We ended up parking at the hotel and it was sunny out, so I didn't see that my LED lights were still on. And there you have it. To be continued.
to be continued. All right, as you hear it, the bike is running and we're laughing. The seat is on. The maintenance guy was awesome. Now we got to get some sunblock and get on out of here. Thank you. And now we are enjoying the festivities that are the flying. Uh, today's actually day two, really, but in honesty, day one starts at this event, from what I hear, tomorrow, Wednesday. So we are here right now getting ready to uh, fix up my brand new Ranger, new to me. Thank you, Dan Landis and the Boomerang team for allowing me to the opportunity to pick up one of the prototypes for the new composite Jet Ranger. Uh, beautiful bird it's phenomenal I'm now putting all of my equipment into the bird today I've got a lot of people out here to help me out so I can maybe even get it flying we'll see stay tuned for that but uh, we're having a great time here in Kentucky I tell you what it, it's amazing this hobby is phenomenal there's a lot of walks of life in this hobby from from father and son father and daughter all the way up until you're 70, 80, 90 years old and still loving this hobby. It's amazing. But what's even better than that is the fact that the camaraderie is so incredible. Everybody loves this hobby. Everybody treats each other as family. Um, the jet side of this event, I'm starting to just dip my toe into the water. I'm starting to meet some new people out here, meet some new friends, and I'm finding that they are the same type of people you find in this hobby anywhere. They are passionate, they love the hobby, they're willing to help you. A um, lot more people getting into the actual turbines, which is awesome. Uh, it's it's really going really well. I've, I've got a couple of videos I'm gonna show you of a couple of 10 and 13 year old kids flying these aircraft like no tomorrow. Uh, a lot of great things to see, stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna get out there today and see what we can see, follow me. How's it going? Hey, they don't score anything on it. Doing good. Still just trying to figure some stuff out. Take it's, hard. it's hard when you don't bring your hobby trip. You gotta rely on everybody else, but they've been great. But um, I don't have any of my stuff. <laughs> so I gotta find stuff. But uh, like chargers, I don't have my chargers here. Oh no! Yeah. What? Oh, but not thinking. I wasn't really thinking I was gonna fly. I was kind of like half thinking I might, but maybe not. So I just grabbed some stuff out of the trailer and threw it in the car, and now the plane is actually ready to fly. What? Yeah. That's Almost. ready. Almost. Very close. Okay. 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 But now I need to charge batteries. <laughs> so I'm bumming some charge. And now I've got to scoop my antennas in place and I'm looking for some fuel tubing that I can do that with because we slide the antenna into fuel tubing and goop the fuel tubing. And I had a little piece, but I can't find it. <laughs> I know I had it. The organized mess. And my radio. I need to charge my radio. <laughs> Does it have a cord? I didn't bring the charger. <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't planning on flying. You're missing your Nick. I'm sorry. I'm missing my Nick. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having to work, Nick. <laughs> Thanks for having to have a living, Nick. All right, what are you doing now? Mounting my antennas. Oh. You always want your antennas perpendicular to each other. And uh, I use fuel tubing 
put the antenna through to hold it in. Ah, uh, that's what you were looking for in town. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Uh, so you don't have to put shoe goop on your antenna. You can just put it on the fuel tubing. I uh, gotcha. And the fuel tubing kind of holds it in place. So sets up pretty quick, not too bad, but you can, if you use shoe goop, you can actually pull the shoe goop off. It doesn't, doesn't stick like glue, but it holds just enough that okay. for our purposes, what that's all we need. Very cool. All right, we're charging it up. Charging it up for the maiden flight, babe. What <laughs> do you think? Do you think it's gonna happen? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Okay. It's gonna happen. All right. Mark getting his sign off. All right, we're getting closer. Yes. Okay, good. We're getting closer, heading it towards the flight line. Just make sure the track's straight. Check it one more thing. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, I appreciate it. Huh? I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, baby, he did it. Very cool. I'm gonna charge up because I want to fly again. So, how you feeling, Mark? I'm feeling good. <laughs> did the maiden flight? It worked out pretty good. Did the second flight? Worked out even better. So now I just got to do some adjustments, some trimming, some weight balance and get it even better. Sweet. But it's been great. I'm happy with it. Engine performs good, so I'm happy about that. All right, right now, we're setting up a Dream flight is in the house. That's right, baby. Hey, guys, how you doing? Fantastic, man. We're doing jet stuff. All right, gentlemen, I'm here with Extreme Flight, and they are getting into the turbine jet market. Guys, what possessed you to do that? Because he can finally do 3D. Yes. We're a 3D company, and, you know, now that, now that yeah, you know, 3D and thrust vectoring has become consistent, we found a good supplier to make it the way, and, you know, should be. Listen yeah. to our feedback. Uh, we're in it, man. You better believe it. We're in it a big way. So. Well, now, tell, tell me this. What is the product? What do we got? This is a uh, Skywing Falcon 2.1 meter specifically. This is our first offering in the uh, in the jet market. 
very soon to uh, to our already announced the 1.8 and the 2.8 meter. Um, but this is what we have here, and we've been flying it for the past I don't know three months now. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> wow. And, so what are you uh, powering it by? Uh, this one specifically has a Swinwind 120, and we do have, actually have another one with a King Tech 180 for uh, vectoring purposes. So a little bit more power for uh, hovering and such, but this is perfect for the regular sport flying, let's say. So this is going to sport fly, but this isn't going to, this doesn't have vectoring thrust. It does not, no. Although it does come included in, in the kit, everything you need for thrust vectoring, this one has, does not have it installed, so it's just the point and shoot for sport flying. You're going to need a little more power though than 120. Yeah. For sure, yes. As okay. I said, we have the, the 180 on it and it's plenty for it. It has quite a bit of power and uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Not only on the sport configuration, but also on the vector full 3D configuration. Well, we watched you guys fly yesterday and, you know, impressive is an understatement, obviously. Even you guys are flying the, the props 3D. It's just, it's amazing. Extreme Flight always brings some awesome products to the market. And now you're getting into turbines. I mean, it's fun to transition to it. I mean, it's, that's it's, great. It's it's low hanging fruit. There's a lot of jet manufacturers out there. Skywing is a brand that's ours exclusively in the United States, and they're doing a really good job for our first effort. It's actually really impressive. So yeah. Now it's all modular connected too, isn't it? Yeah, actually. I mean, if you want to show them on the. Sure, I can do that. So. Uh, canopy, wings, and stab have the same uh, functionality, and it's basically a quick assembly system that you press the button, and it's unlocked, so it's good to pull. It wow. already has the uh, connector there for the wing, and or for the for the elevator, and also the wings retracts all have that same thing. Yeah. For the wings, it has two of these, two of these latches, one in the front, one in the rear. Uh, and for the elevator, it's just one that you push back in place, lock it, and you're good to go. Set. Same thing with the canopy, so it's very easy, very intuitive. And overall, uh, accessibility is perfect. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, what I noticed was the slow flying characteristics of this plane looked phenomenal. They do. Is yeah. that just your experience, or does this plane just fly well in all envelopes? It flies very, very well in all envelopes. And uh, one of the biggest reasons I was actually uh, discussing with Tim this is the fact that the aircraft is squared. It is 2.1 meters not only in length, but also in wingspan. Yeah. And if you look at the shape of the wing, it's not very swift to the back. It also has quite a bit of, uh, of wing area, which is not exactly common with sport jets, um, or with jets in general, let's say. And uh, yeah, that helps out quite a bit on the slow flying characteristics. I mean, for a 2.1 meter jet, it, it, it flies pretty good in slow speeds. I mean, yeah. usually the smaller it is, the more critical and the more, uh, uh, I guess, uh, harder to fly, let's say it is in slower speeds. Yeah. But this one is uh, most definitely an exception and very easy to fly. Now, talk to us a little bit about the price point. What are we looking at here? So on this one, we've still got entry. Uh, we're doing basically in a um, first market price at like 30, what, 33 99 something right. like yes. that. But that's in regular price would be 35 9 on it. Uh, so it's 33 99 uh, Comes with the airframe, comes with the tank, comes with a good UAT. Actually comes with the smoke tank install, but we removed it because we made this as light as possible. Comes with the extensions pre-ran. Comes with all the different receptacles for your plugs. Already comes with, pre wired. Comes with wing bags, stab bags, fuse, fuse bag, a transport cradle. I mean, it's it's like incredible value. So, yeah. For sure. That Definitely. is incredible value. Yeah. So, I mean, you're getting almost a turnkey airplane. I mean, obviously, you got to put your own electronics sure. in it. But we saw, we were looking it up on your website, we saw that you have servo options too. Yes, we do. So, yeah. you can have those pre installed. Uh, not pre-installed. Okay. Included. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty quick assembly. I think we we put one together for a customer in a, like an evening or two. Yeah. Realistically, because it's just like the rest of the Skywing lineup. All the horns are already glued in. All the hinges are done. It's really just dropping electronics, hooking up linkages. So, wow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. In regards to electronics on this one, we're running a Savox servo. So for the, the recommended package. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. The okay. recommended. So it's uh on the ailerons, it's twelve sixty ones. Elevators and rudder as well, Salvox 1261s. For the flaps, however, it is a standard size servo, so we're running Salvox 2262s. Okay. And uh, as I said, Swinwin 120, really simple, straightforward setup that works really well. Nice, and you're, of course, uh, controlling it all with JR, right? Yeah, this one's got the JR matrix on there. We've got it with their odd even 16 channel system. So that way we can just run the landing gear directly into it. There's no, not a lot of extra stuff. Everything just runs in. This is just running PWM. So really you can put your choice servos or the Savox or whatever. And it works for us. Yeah. The mixing on it's pretty nice. We've got it with full length aileron, outer aileron, and then a position of flaps with a little bit of down elevator mix. Whoa, kit. look so, at that. Really? Yeah. 
That's yep. fantastic. Now tell me about the difference in the roll rate when you have that mix. It's quite a bit of a difference. Oh <laughs> yeah. my goodness, yeah. And uh, honestly, for most people, it's uh, it's a little bit too much. Sure. Um, it's very impressive, uh, especially whenever you're in high speeds and such. But honestly, I think the, the biggest difference and advantage that you have from the full span comes down whenever you're using the vector. Since there's no airflow like a 3D aircraft that has the prop wash going through the aileron, and the very lack of airflow going through the aileron on a jet. Sure. Having the full span ailerons is most definitely advantages and uh, it makes quite a bit of a difference whenever you're just carrying around and you know doing turns and things of the sort using the vector. So um, obviously a huge difference in sport flying, but I would say the biggest difference and more useful would be in the actual vectored flying since it gives you more authority. So tell me this then, because with that flight envelope, that price point, we're getting, we could actually attack entry level to advanced. Yeah, I would say so, yes. Mm -hmm. So you can get, and you would feel comfortable flying this as your first jet. Now, obviously we're not talking about people just flying. We're talking about people getting into turbines, right? Well, I'll, I'll tell you a fun fact, right? So we have some of our team guys, we have some of our, our guys from customer service. We brought this out to Triple Tree a couple weeks after Null. Yep. We, we were invited there, We and it was a special occasion. We got to just fly on the main line until we were, I mean, blue in the face. We went through 15 gallons of fuel wow. on the jet, and it was it was great. And where we're going with this is we had high-level pilots like Antonio putting it through the ringer, and then we also had brand new jet pilots who grabbed a couple guys like, hey, you want to give this a shot? And they couldn't believe how predictable, how stable, how, I mean, everything just worked. So Now, every plane, Antonio, tell me, every plane has great characteristics and some have bad characteristics, sure. especially when you get slow and you have a stall, like dip in the wing. For sure. Does this plane have any of those characteristics that you have to watch out for? To be quite honest with you, I haven't reached that yet. Uh, it, it's, and it's a good thing to say because I've pushed the aircraft quite a bit, not only in high speeds and pulling and pushing to make sure the aircraft uh, uh, can hold on to it in the sense of high speed stalls. I haven't reached it yet and I've, I've I pushed it in, I, I in regards bet you pushed to it. really, you know, going as slow as possible as I can, as fast as possible, safely, obviously, as I can, in regards to overall just pushing the envelope and trying to see what is the breaking point in regards to the aircraft not wanting to fly anymore. I haven't reached it yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, but I can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, because he's a high, he's a high level pilot with this and, you know, for prop planes, I'd consider myself above the curve. When I get to jet stuff, I'm still fairly new at this. That's so how I me, am. It's, it's managing the energy and learning what not to do. I mean, the biggest mindset is you get out there and you get so attached to the speed where you're pinned in it and then you really stop, you know, you don't think about, uh, you know, am I too fast for a turn? And so there's some basic fundamental things that you have to worry about, but realistically, it's it's all pretty forgiving so far because as soon as I started to notice something getting mushy, you just let go, starts flying again, good to go. So the Cortex so, helps you out in that, but also you got this nice straight wing. So, I mean, the stall characteristics of this nice straight wing just seems like it's going to be very forgiving. I'll tell you something cool also with this one. When they developed this in China, because we got to do, we got to put our little refining uh, touch on it, send back feedback for the final product. But when this was actually developed, the designer doesn't even know how to do a gyro. So it was 100% raw. Wow. No flight delay, no, no extra stability, no anything. He was just flying up with top of transmitter and receiver and off he went. He did his laps. He said, it feels pretty good. Let me know what you think. The airship went to us and was like, it was just a cherry on top. So. Now, Antonio, have you snapped this at all? Have you done any uh, elevator snaps where you put this really into a G test? I have. Yeah? Yes, I have a couple times. Um, while it is an aircraft that is sport related, um, you still have to be cognizant exactly, of your G forces. Yeah, don't I mean, you? at the end of the day, especially whenever you're running the vectored setup, running a 180 on a two meter jet. You're not going to go full throttle, bank and yank, and you know, at the end of the day, it is a jet that is sport flying and, you know, focused for that, but you still have, you know, a little bit of the common sense side to not push it above the envelope that it's capable of. I mean, honestly, Absolutely. I think snaps, I mean, realistically, it's a maneuver not really engineered for this kind of stuff. We sure. do it with prop planes and... I don't know that I, you know, how many, you could probably get away with it, but I mean, I don't know how many of these planes would, you know, so, you know, take the fatigue of snap after snap after snap. So, yeah, yeah, and now this is full composite, correct? Yes, yep. yes it is. Yep. So, I mean, it's it's got the structural capacity to do it, but yep. over time, these models are built for longevity, aren't they? 
I mean, so you're gonna fly these things for hundreds of flights. Ideally. Ideally, <laughs> if you can get there, right? But I mean, you also get what you put into it too. If you bang it as hard as you can, nonstop, like a lot of these kids do. Sure. Every, a paper clip wears out over time. I mean, Absolutely. These are strong until they're not, just like anything else. But the structure as it is, it's got a really nice shape. It's engineered really well. I think they've done a good job with it. So. Now, what's the uh, wet flying weight? For what, 23, 24 pounds? That's it's really cool. light for wow. 2.1. Wow, yeah. really? Yep. yep, right around that. Well, there, there you go. Composites are awesome, aren't they? Yes, they are. I mean, you can get that power to weight ratio even in a 120. You're flying a 120 in this thing. Oh, yeah, 120. Now, what do you think? Can you can you get a 102 in this? Will it fly with the 102? I think it will. Yeah, at 23 I mean, pounds, I mean, that's that's uh, just a little under the one to one, right? You'd be playing, you'd be playing with CG at that point. If okay. Anything stick with what they recommend. I mean, yep. we've got a jet over there. The 1.8 is designed for the 80, the 120. Yep. So I mean, if you've got an engine on there, put the put the right engine in the right plane rather than trying to just use what you've got. Absolutely. The right ones, I think. So yeah. Now you have other products too, don't you? Uh, in regards to. I heard you're in development with another sport jet. Uh, is that true? And neither confirmed nor denied. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah. Very good. Gentlemen, you know, I am so thankful you took the time with me today. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. We always It's always a pleasure to watch Extreme Flight in the house. And uh, we're going to get to see you fly it next, huh? Yes, sir. All right, yeah. let's do it. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. gentlemen. Thank you. having a blast I gotta tell you we've we've met some great people out here at Jets over Kentucky um, and uh, it's been an amazing event hasn't it I don't know if she thinks so but <laughs> she's she's a good sport she's she's here for the ride and uh, we've been doing we've been having a lot of fun she's got a lot of video too and I know the camera's focusing between the both of us here it doesn't know who to focus on let me see if I can't get that no you me no it doesn't know <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we're planning on leaving maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. We're not sure. Luckily, we both don't have to be back to work until Monday, so we've got all weekend to worry about that and think about that. A um, lot of great video content out here with these jet guys. Uh, we've got a lot of good scale flying, got a lot of uh, obviously turbines uh, flying, got some 3D guys flying, um, Horizon Hobbies out here, Extreme Flights out here. Uh, Jet Cat's out here, um, 
Aero Panda. Um, my goodness, they have a lot of vendors out here, a lot of support out here. So um, we just we're just having a great time. So thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope we got enough video content for you over Jets over Kentucky. This is going to be one of our stops. Uh, we've just uh, we've loved it here. So next year we're going to do the same thing. Hope you come along with us for the ride. Take care. Goodness, his military skills have come into play. Not yet. It doesn't work yet. <laughs> We're going to attempt to put a what is it? Fuel pump. A fuel pump in the line because he thinks it's not getting fuel like it should. That's not a good view because I don't want to get out of my chair. Oh, there it is. Yep. Attaching the fuel pump to that. And he's going to put that little on there somehow some way and I swear I'm not sitting in a chair watching him do this but first we gotta actually hook up the power make sure it works just need to guesstimate on some wire length oh you have to run it to that battery every wire needs a positive or negative baby I'm so glad your YouTube channel people can learn this Nick will probably speed through this. Yeah, Nick's not going to allow you to sit there <laughs> and watch me the whole time. You'll get zoomed through it all, so it'll happen in like two seconds. Yeah. You'll be like Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, I see that you messed up or that you're using the wrong stuff. Yeah. Should I zoom in on it then? Is that what you're saying? No. All right, so we just jerry-rigged a fuel pump to this thing. I'm pretty confident it's the fuel pump. It's just not sucking fuel. So I just jerry-rigged the fuel pump. We've got it hooked to the battery. I'll add a switch and everything later. Let's see if it works. Do we have air conditioning tonight, Jen? Let's see, fingers crossed. Let's find out. <laughs> 